I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade. Cue the music. This drunken little German monk is intoxicated with himself. Sober him. Life by the branches. <laughs> Oh, that joke never gets old. I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade, a weekly theological podcast where we sit down at the kitchen table, grab ourselves an ice-cold beer, and talk about theology. Lutheran Lemonade, to gladden the heart of ma'am. This coming to us from the tradition of sitting down at a table with Luther drinking beer and talking about theology, and from this great tradition of the Lutheran Church comes a phenomenal book I highly recommend you pick up, Luther's Works Table Talk. It is incredible. Now, we Lutherans, we don't hold to table talk as doctrine. It's not contained in the Book of Concord, so we don't hold to everything that Luther says, and he says some funny things, funny things in there. But this this is my kitchen table, and I am a Lutheran, and we're going to talk about theology now. Uh, At the time of this recording, it is currently the evening of Ash Wednesday. At the time of your listening or the time of your viewing, it could be the Thursday after Ash Wednesday or the Friday after Ash Wednesday. So we're going to talk about the hypocrisy of Lent. That's right. So, before we get started with the hypocrisy of Lent, where on earth can you find Lutheran Lemonade? Well, I'm on soundcloud.com forward slash Lutheran Lemonade. You can also find me on YouTube. My YouTube channel is 1517 Films. Just look for the circle with 1517 and the word films in big bold letters underneath, and you got it. 1517 Films, where I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash 1517 films. And I've started a little Lenten devotional series on uh, YouTube where we're going to go through what's called the Treasury of Daily Prayer. And we're going to focus on a gospel reading, uh, maybe an epistle reading, and a quotation from a church father. And I've noticed as I've been going through of this, all of these quotes are from Martin Luther thus far. So I think... Uh, if you're going to watch this series, I highly recommend it. It's on Facebook. It's called uh, Lent 2020, uh, Faith of Our Fathers. Uh, the, the the Book of Concord, is, or not the Book of Concord, uh, the Treasury of Daily Prayers is like this thick if you're watching it on YouTube. And it's 365 days of devotions, all sorts of at-home um divine well not divine services but little little services of the word matins vespers compline things like that um so throughout these 365 days of devotion in the treasury of daily prayer guess what there's going to be a lot of quotes from luther and it seems like at the beginning of the lenten series uh, which is actually where the book begins the beginning of the book starts with lent um it's interest fascinating and uh a lot of them seem to be by Martin Luther, so definitely check that out. YouTube.com, 1517 Films, Lent 2020, Faith of Our Fathers, check that out. But uh, this episode of Lutheran Lemonade, I want to devote to the hypocrisy of Lent. Hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. And I'll tell you why. It's because I come from a family where God was just rolling for denominations and went, <clears throat> Yahtzee. That's the denominational center of my family. I'm one of very few Lutherans in my family, and I happen to be, in case you haven't picked up, the most articulate. So, yeah, lots of opinions, and I hear it all the time from my family. Oh, I give up Lent for Lent. Oh, I give up vain repetition of men. I give up vain traditions of men for Lent. Oh, oh, oh. those Roman Catholics, oh, oh, oh. they're a bunch of hypocrites. Don't, don't they read the Bible that it says you're not supposed to mark yourself when you're fasting, and then they go to church on Sunday, and they got ashes on their forehead? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was really hard to sustain. <laughs> So there's some challenges from mainland American evangelicals, Protestants, towards Lent. And I can kind of understand some of them because I'm not Roman Catholic myself. And I can see some of the Roman Catholic traditions and go, I have a question. But right there, I think, is the difference. Where I, as as a, a Lutheran, can look at the Roman Catholics during the season of Lent and go, uh, 
with all due respect, I have a question that's markedly different from, oh, your traditions of men, oh, I'm so much more pious and holy than you because I'm giving up Lent for Lent. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. So uh, there are some challenges, and I think one of them, uh, we're going to actually go to the Word of God for this one. Now, uh, I was sitting in church with my son uh, for Ash Wednesday, receiving the imposition of ashes, and it was a full-blown divine service, which means there was uh, a special portion of it dedicated to the imposition of ashes and it was beautiful that we prayed the litany and i have a video on youtube all about the litany check that out but then the imposition of ashes and then the old testament the epistle the gospel reading and the gospel reading is about fasting well of course it is we're beginning the season of lent that's what you do during lent so we're going to turn to the the gospel of matthew we're going to start in chapter 6, and we're going to go uh, verses 1 through 6, and then 16 through 21. So here we go. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also." So this is the gospel reading traditionally for Ash Wednesday, uh, of course, because it, it, Lent and fasting go together, uh, and th there's too much to go into, but there's a rich, rich heritage of fasting associated with the season of Lent. So uh, the Protestants are going to go, oh, you just read the gospel. Don't disfigure your face. Don't look gloomy. Do all of this in secret. I, these people, mind you, by and large, are the ones that will hold hands around a flagpole once a year for the sole purpose of being seen by everybody else while they pray. They call it see you at the pole. That's okay. But an ashen cross on my forehead to remind me that I am dust and to dust I shall return, completely inappropriate, I suppose. <laughs> I'm sorry. I started to get really angry and then I realized how stupid that argument was. <laughs> well, not the argument, but the principle, man. If we're going to look at this verse and talk about doing things in secret and praying in secret, and when we fast, uh, when we fast, not if we fast, when we fast, Jesus expects that the Christian is going to fast, that the Christian is going to deprive himself or herself of something that they love for the sole purpose of deepening their time in devotion, in worship, and in the giving of alms. But I digress. Let's shh. Don't tell the Protestants that Jesus said when you fast, not if. So the argument is you can't put this ashen cross on your forehead, Ryan, and then you're announcing to the world that you're fasting. You're 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 making your face look all gloomy with this black, dusty cross on your head. You're being a hypocrite. You're doing it to be seen. What if I told you <laughs> that the history of ashes <laughs> and repentance 
has nothing to do with the gospel reading from the book of Matthew. What if I told you that the imposition of ashes, while the modern practice of it on Ash Wednesday is comparatively new, uh, considering the 2,000-year history and heritage of the church, but the practice at the season of Lent of imposing ashes on repentant sinners is ancient and comes to us from the book of Joel, not from the Gospel of Matthew. So I have this pamphlet here. I found it. It's a program from the Ash Wednesday service today and at, at, uh, at the church I attended with my son, and um, I found this incredibly helpful. Ash Wednesday is the first day of Lent. It begins as the day that penitents who, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it begins as the day that penitents who had been excommunicated from the church came to be enrolled for reinstatement, which would take place on Holy Thursday, Monday, Thursday. They would lie on the ground wearing sackcloth garments, and after an exhortation from the bishop, ashes would be sprinkled upon them. This biblical gesture came to be embraced by all Christians as a sign of repentance. It is now administered by applying a cross on the forehead with ashes, accompanied by the somber reminder, Remember, O man, that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. Now that quote comes to us from the book of Genesis, but at this Ash Wednesday service, the Old Testament reading came to us from the book of Joel, the second chapter, verses 12 through 19. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. So this is the, the Old Testament reading for the, the Ash Wednesday. This, this is where, this is where Christians first sought drew from for the imposition of ashes now in ancient days and, and again i have a video on this uh, on youtube uh, that i'll link in the description below i highly recommend you watch it about ash wednesday there was extreme persecution in ancient times and you would have to offer up a pinch of incense and say caesar is lord and christians for fear of pain of death would sometimes do this they were excommunicated. They excommunicated themselves from the assembly, from the church. But Christ is nothing if not gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And so the church very early on in her history began to reinstate people because uh, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. So they would wear sackcloth and they would be covered in ashes. And now this verse, these verses from Joel, what does it say? Between the vestibule and the altar. Well, where is that? In, in modern context, it's between the narthex and the altar. The sanctuary, in the sanctuary, in the congregation, uh, with the people do this. Assemble the elders, gather the children, even Evangelicals, are you listening? Nursing infants. 
<laughs> Every promise of God is even for a nursing infant. So, no, Christians who put ashes on their forehead on Ash Wednesday are not hypocrites a la Matthew chapter 6. They simply are not. Because the ashes are there to remind us that we were created from the dust of the earth and to the dust of the earth we shall return and these ashes which are remnants of the burned palm branches of the previous palm sunday mixed with a little bit of oil put on our forehead in the shape of a cross i heard it said and i think it was a catholic friar who said it actually I have ashes on my forehead that confess I'm a sinner. These ashes in the shape of a cross confess I have a savior. And I thought for a Roman Catholic friar, that was an incredibly powerful statement. So no, there's no hypocrisy involved because yes, the practice of fasting during Lent, depriving yourself of something that you love, to deepen your devotion and to take that time that you would normally commit to whatever it is you used to do and devote it to God's word. Um, and to take whatever, let's say you're skipping a meal, to take whatever money you're saving by not eating those meals for 40 days, giving it to the church for the sake of helping the poor and the needy and the downtrodden. When you do this, do this in secret, Jesus says. So what did what did Ryan give up for Lent? <laughs> I'm never going to tell you. Um, because I'm doing it in secret. If I'm doing it at all. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> so no, there's no hypocrisy. I'm sorry, dear pious evangelical. There's no hypocrisy involved in the tradition of putting ashes on your forehead on Ash Wednesday because the history of our church shows us that it was very early on that, that repentant people seeking to be forgiven and brought back into church, into the body of Christ, were sprinkled with ashes as a sign of their repentance. So why do Christians on Ash Wednesday receive an ashen cross on their forehead? Because they are sinners and they are going to die. But that cross placed on their forehead in the same spot the cross was placed on their forehead and the water was poured when they were baptized is a reminder that Christ is their hope that his suffering, his death, his resurrection is sufficient for all that is needful. And the tradition of fasting out of the Gospel of Matthew, when you fast, it is expected that Christians are to fast as a part of their Christian life and their Christian walk. When you do that, do that in secret. Hope this has been helpful. Hope I didn't defend any Protestants by pointing out how pompous and arrogant you can be sometimes at the sheer show of humility and penitence by faithful Christians all around the world of multiple denominations who receive an ashen cross on their forehead on Ash Wednesday. Season of Lent is a wonderful, wonderful time to reflect on the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and reflect on what and who sent that upon him. Who made him, who made it necessary for him to go to the cross? That would be you and me. Out of love, the Father sent his Son. And one more thing on fasting before I let you go. Fasting is not, as the Gospel of Matthew points out, something that we do to prove how pious and righteous we are and how better we are than anyone else. No, 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 no. Um, I think fasting, when we think about it, is kind of more like the morning of Thanksgiving, isn't it? Many people, myself included, uh, just don't eat anything in the morning on Thanksgiving or maybe have a light lunch just to quell the in their stomach. We're fasting. We're depriving ourselves of food 
in joyful anticipation of a meal that is going to come. We're not fasting from, from food on Thanksgiving because <laughs> I'm better than you for not eating before Thanksgiving. We're fasting in joyful anticipation of the meal that is being prepared and that we will one day, one moment on Thanksgiving, partake in. That is the Christian attitude on fasting. We deprive ourselves of food or, or anything else that, that we love that may be turned into an idol. We replace it with God's word because God do, or man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And in joyful anticipation of the day when we are in his presence, when we partake of the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, in joyful anticipation of that, we can, we should, we ought deprive ourselves and in that uh, time of depriving ourselves, devote ourselves to God, work God's word, which is the true bread. And any money that we might save should be given to the poor and to the needy. So that is a little bit about Lent. I've been talking about Lent a lot lately. Definitely find me at youtube.com at 1517films or at facebook.com forward slash 1517films and we can carry on this conversation about Lent a lot more. There's also that Lenten devotional series, Faith of Our Fathers, that I'm really enjoying putting together for you guys. I'm Ryan and this is Lutheran Lemonade and I'm wishing you a blessed Lenten tide, the season of repentant joy.